Hartman. Visit TomHartman.com for audio and video archives. And welcome back. Mark Taylor Canfield in Seattle. Hey, Mark, how you doing? Good, Tom. Last week marked the 10th anniversary of the Occupy Wall Street movement. So I participated in an online conference with Professor Stephanie Luce, who's the co-author of the current article in the Nation magazine about that movement. But my claim to fame was that during that movement in Seattle, I led some folks down to Pike Place Market and burned my Bank of America card. And the reason I did that is because I'd seen the images of uh, young men burning their draft cards in Viet- during the Vietnam War, and I thought that would be a very powerful image. Mm-hmm. So by the end of the day, hundreds of people had cut up their cards and uh, Bank a- America and Chase cards, and the photo of me ended up being published in the Washington Post. And very cool, and Mark. On CBS News. Good so, on you. But I wanted to... I wanted to set the record straight, though. Oh, yeah, so millions of dollars were divested from those major banks during that movement. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wanted to set the record straight, though, that long before the folks gathered at Zuccotti Park in New York City, folks were already occupying state houses and capitals in Wisconsin and in other states in opposition to the budget cuts to education and public services, those austerity measures, right? right. So in Olympia, Washington, people occupied the state capitol here for six days, and they called themselves Occupy Washington. And that was before what happened in Zuccotti Park. And by the way, I was arrested during those protests and uh, won a major class action civil rights lawsuit against the Washington State Patrol because of a, a you know, violation of the freedom of the press because of my arrest there. Wow. But I just want to thank everybody who went out there and, you know, camped in the parks and marched in the streets to bring these progressive populist values to the mainstream because now we have these movements like the Bernie Sanders campaign for president and my friend and Congressman Pramila Jayapal and Shama Swan, our Democratic Socialist City Council member here, who I consider to kind of all be Occupy candidates because they are um, still promoting those same values about, you know, hey, okay, we bailed out the rich folks. How about the middle class and the poor folks? We're still waiting for that bailout, Joe. Yeah, I think we're still in the same boat. Yeah, well, so, and, and, and you know, the, the, his three and a half trillion dollar reconciliation package would go a long way toward fulfilling those promises. But you've got uh, two Democratic senators that just don't want it to happen, sadly. Well, I call them Demopublicans because they're not really Democrats. They're actually, I think, Republicans in Democratic clothing. Or maybe you could call them I think they're just corrupt Democrats. Yeah, I, you know, I, a, I don't think you have to you have to conflate them with the. I mean, the entire Republican Party is corrupt. It's become a, a massive yeah. you know grifter program, and 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 that's that creates its own little cycle where you know where the, the you get a lot of grifters in the Republican Party, and it drives out the honest politicians who just you know disagree with you and me on policy. And once they're gone, there's a vacuum there, and more grifters come in to fill it. And that, this is what we've seen since Reagan. You know, the first professional. A grifter politician president in in my lifetime certainly uh like i said nixon yeah, was just a routine crook it used to be the scam artists in city you know on the frontier and cities like denver you had to watch out for now it's the politicians but i wanted to yeah. give you a breaking story too two thousand construction workers the carpenters union uh is on strike in seattle and across washington state because those guys and girls are not making enough money to even live in the cities where they work Right. So they're asking for better pensions, higher wages. So $15 an hour is not enough to live in Seattle right now, folks, even though it, that whole movement started here. So 2,000 people out on site right now in Seattle. Wow, that's great. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for the update. Mark Taylor Canfield out of Seattle. Uh, we will be right back. It's coming up on 10 minutes before the hour. I'll be right back with you in just 60 seconds after I just pay some bills here on the commercial side of the show. Stick around. Our one-hour free podcast recaps our show, and it's available wherever fine podcasts are found. And we have the full three-hour podcast available over at TomHartman.com if you want to really support our program.